Uh, this game is going to feature Joey Krapchik versus Chris Kulig. Uh, Chris Kulig going first in this game. A rack of ADEI OPR, and this is going to be an interesting decision. You can try to play a little bit longer and score with a play like Podia, P-O-D-I-A. You can exchange maybe one or two tiles and keep very bingo prone, or you can kind of split the difference. Uh, play OP or APO or something like that. This is an interesting decision here, period. Uh, that is a very non-standard play. Uh, typically with bingo prone letters like A-D-E-I-R, uh, you don't want to play those tiles off uh, unless you're going to score very well with them. You'd rather groom your rack towards a bingo. I see in the chat someone asked, why, why not paired, P-A-I-R-E-D? That's uh, a similar play, but generally expert players are going to hold on to bingo prone stuff. They're going to exchange O. They're going to play OPA or APO and hold ride. They're willing to sacrifice 10 or 12 points now to keep great letters next turn. And Chris's pull is, is kind of a testament as to why. In general, <laughs> your rack is going to get worse, not better after a play like period. And that's exactly what happened. Some players like to play long there, but I think if you know a lot of bingos, like both these players do, you do want to play short to maximize your chance of getting that first bingo down. Uh, there's a few different ways you could approach this. What are you thinking on this one? Uh, he could also play E-U-R-I-P-I. -I. I think that's actually what he's about to do here, uh, just to try to get rid of a couple more of those vowels. Um, I really like this idea by Joey. Um, yeah, yeah, I almost I almost queued it up. I like this play quite a bit. PIU, if you want to keep things smaller and tighter, but I'm just not a big fan of holding three vowels and one consonant. Uh, I'd rather play off more vowels and Eurepi because it puts the I or the P on the triple letter. Agreed. I didn't see that one. Uh, one thing I did see, however, is that Joey mistakenly showed the S to Chris. He started putting down E-S-R instead of E-U-R. So now Chris is aware that Joey has the S. Uh, Chris with an interesting rack. Again, he decided to play long, and this is what happens sometimes when you play long. Uh, we'll see if he decides to do it again. He's got plays like Giardia through the D or Agria uh, to play off several of these tiles. But maybe this time he'll elect to play a little bit shorter. He'll try to play off just an A and an I or an A-I-N-G. Uh, I'm, I'm really not familiar with Chris's game or what we can expect him to do here, uh, but I like Giardia and just, just open things up, especially now knowing that Joey has that S that he flashed last turn. Uh, take out the period spot. I like that idea too. We don't like blowing up nice racks, but when we have an uglier rack like Chris has, we do like blowing them up. So playing off six, holding the best style on the rack, the E, uh, I think that's a great idea. It does obstruct things too. Did he just exchange seven? Oh, that's, he had an ER, didn't he? He had or an R. A -R? He had an R, he had, a, he had an E, he had an A and an I, and he decided to change seven. So Chris, I guess, so far, two for two on just playing very long or turning over as many tiles as he can. Maybe he feels like he needs to draw both blanks to have a chance against a 2100 player like Joey. Um, but Joey's going to have back a very Good nice one. double to, to play his way out of that rack, disbars, and he's going to play it instantly for 40 points. So uh, curious decisions on each of Chris's first two moves here, and uh, this one does seem to blow up in his face. Uh, he did draw the blank, but I agree when you have ER, you have to hold on to it. It just goes together so nicely, but you really shouldn't be exchanging all seven. But he has picked a lot of nice tiles that he can do damage with. Oh, so someone's saying if you looked at the other camera he held to, that doesn't seem possible. He's only got an E from his previous rack. Um, so I think he changed seven. Um, and blue is a pretty standard play here. N-E-W-B uh, is another option in the same spot. I think the L actually synergizes a little bit better with the Z. I don't know if that's worth the one point difference in the score of those plays, but I would have played noob there. Um, though I, I think both plays are, are relatively equal. Yeah, I don't think that's a big difference, but I do think Joey's about to hit Chris with a bingo here. Uh, 
No, but Calderas does. Uh, Calderas and Calendar are the two bingos out of this rack. And of those, I prefer Calderas. If you're going to go up and take an even bigger lead like Joey's doing, I play the more defensive bingo here for sure. And Calderas is definitely the more defensive of the two. But he didn't draw the blank. And look at that post bingo draw. That is ugly. Um, that'll give Chris a chance to get back into this game. Um, first, he's going to have to find a big play here. He still hasn't been able to get towards a full bingo rack despite having that blank. Uh, I wonder if there's a clever way to set up this Z somewhere. Yeah, you can't do a lot with it now, but if you make a play like Lutz and just get rid of it, Joey can hit you back for 45 or 50 easily. Uh, the Z is a good tile, and you want to score good points with it. I think because he has the blank, he'd be a bit less likely to look for setups or fishes. His path would more be score 30 with the Z on this turn and then bingo on the next turn with the blank. Although bingo lanes are going to start to become a bit more closed. I could see Joey uh, with his lead really starting to try and shut things down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, generally with the lead, you're looking to shut down bingo lines. And so setting up a Z for 50 or 60 is not going to be something that your opponent's looking to block. Um, at, at the same time, I'm just not seeing a good way to uh, to fish for or set up that Z in, in any sort of lucrative way. So I think, unfortunately for Chris, he's just going to have to cash it in and play Lutz here, L-U-T-Z. Okay, uh, he's going to play Beauty. And I have no problem. Uh, there is with a big Z well. spot beneath the E that he has opened up if he can draw the right tiles. And Joey might have to exchange here. He's got six vowels, three I's, two O's. That's ugly. Um, you know, he could play something like Oleo. Uh, he could play Luby. I believe that's a word through the B. I'm going to just double check that. No. Um, you need the S for that one. So. Do not play Luby. Those Ys versus IE endings in the singular are another one of those tricky uh, words that even the top players don't always have down pat. Uh, being the high rated player, he could try and be aggressive, thinking that Chris might be reluctant to challenge him. You could also play just uh, Louis, I guess, in the bottom left, but that would open more of the board when I think he's trying to do the opposite. I would be exchanging here, I think. This is tricky. Uh, I think Louis, Oily, and Exchanging all have a good amount of merit for different reasons. Uh, given the game score, uh, if Joey were up 100, we're playing Oily here. But Joey's not up 100. He's only up 53, and he's going to be holding pretty terribly no matter what he does. Or he'll score zero if he does Exchange. So not really in the driver's seat in this game, not at this point. Uh, I do want to point out, I think what Chris did last turn is fishing for Zany. He held ZN. Any A draw is going to hit Zany for him and, you know, sets up other potential spots for the Z as well. So I think that's the uh, idea that he, he went for there. Set up the Z. I think, I really don't know which way he's going to go. I think we're either going to see Oily or an exchange. And, and this, again, is one of those positions where I don't think there is a right decision. This is more what play style do I want and what do I want to do with the board? And it's tough for me as a commentator to make that decision when I know almost nothing about Chris's game, though I think Joey's got quite a bit more familiarity with him as an opponent as Joey travels a lot to play the game of Scrabble. Yeah, and that's really important. Um, knowing how your opponent plays lets you make adjustments, and these minor adjustments are what really separate the top players. Yeah, and he will play Uri. Okay, so that's definitely one of the reasonable options here. Nice play by Joey. Anyways, we'll go over to Chris's rack here. He's picked up the Q. Uh, he's been trying to work towards a bingo, and he seems to be, unfortunately, moving the other way, farther from a bingo. Yeah, that, that's what Scrabble does sometimes. And, uh, you know, you just got to draw better, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Noah Walton in the chat pointing out that on the cutie turn last turn for Chris, he could have played B-U-Z-Z-Y -Z using his blank uh, Buzzy from the B and Dis bars for a, a good amount of points. That'd be, uh, what, 57? But, uh, yeah, that's an interesting option as well. He's going to play Gs here, holding Q in in blank. But, hey, look, if he gets something good with the Q... He'll play it, uh -oh. QI and BI plays. And if he draws garbage like he just did, well, <laughs> you were going to exchange anyway, right? So uh, 
I bet we see an exchange from Chris next turn, but at least he's able to get 34 out of a garbage rack and he'll be able to hold on to the blank. I'm curious to see if this time when Chris exchanges, he actually keeps an additional tile or if he exchanges everything but the blank this time. I hope he keeps CR blank or RN blank, uh, something a bit more bingo prone. There's a couple lanes, including through the L and the B of blue, through the E of Uri. Um, Joey here has a play that I hope he finds glitz between the L and the Z. Um, so that would that would help get rid of some of his duplicates there. One of the duplicate I's and one of the duplicate T's. Yeah, glitz is definitely statically uh, the best play, the best play in a vacuum. Joey, I think, needs to consider to what degree is he an overdog in this game. He is the higher rated player and he has the lead, but it sets up this enormous Y hook that's going to be rather tough to address. Um, so maybe for that he forewent it. Maybe he didn't see it uh, at all. Um, but uh, Joey decides to bypass that. He plays T-I-L here. There are all six ends unseen, and Joey does often think about things like that. So I think that's what he was, uh, well, part of the rationale there. And he's going to get a great draw. He'll have lighting uh, and, and a handful of other bingos out of that rack. So G-I-I-T looks terrible, but hey, all six ends in the bag. Uh, I, I think maybe we roll the dice there. So decent idea by Joey, and it pays off and then some. A uh, bit of a strange decision there, and it looks like Chris is exchanging again. Okay, so he exchanged six again. Um, if Chris watches this stream after he's played, I'd really encourage him, uh, when you have the blank, when you have nice tiles, to hang on to things that are synergistic. So hanging on to maybe, like I said, RN blank or CR blank. Yeah, no, these, these exchanges are very curious and very non-standard decisions. Maybe Chris has a better idea of, of why he's doing this, but I think almost all experts would agree. You probably want to hold like CR uh, out of that rack or maybe CK if you're trying to score instead of bingo. Uh, but exchanging six there is, is a little bit wild and gives, uh, you know, it, it can go a, a bunch of different ways and it sets you up for more failure like he's just done here. He still won't be bingoing next turn as he draws A-J-M-O-T-U on that exchange. But he can open another triple-triple lane by playing Jewel, J-O-U-A-L, uh, to blue. And I think that has to clear, clearly be the best play in this position. He's got... Jumbo somewhere, right? Jumbo through the B as well. Uh, that's an interesting way to open a bingo line up on top. That'll be difficult to address. Uh, or Jewel, I don't know, Jewel can give back big plays from the J, but if Joey doesn't have one, maybe you hit that big play through the J. Uh, both good plays, uh, tough decision, I think, for, for Chris, but those seem to be the two best options. Yeah, playing behind, you just have to hope that your opponent can't capitalize. Uh, the J in that position is a bit harder to hit the triple than maybe some might think. There aren't that many longer J words, and there aren't that many words that would end in J. So I think I would be playing Jewel. It also scores more. Um, looks like Quackle says it's eight more points. So I would definitely be playing that if he's able to find it. What do we think about Umbo? instead of Jumbo. Uh, it sets up the J behind it for an easy 50-point bomb holding the blank, or maybe a 100-point bingo, and it also sets up the J in front. Uh, that's yeah, an interesting uh, Props to Joey Malik for, for thinking of that. I don't think you can forego the 16 points. I think you need to score now and bingo urgently as this game is slipping away, but uh, a cool idea. A very cool idea, but he finally has left himself a nice balanced bingo leave of AT blank. And let's see if he's able to pay off with this draw. O-E-O-M. Okay. Uh, that definitely has possibilities. But first we'll yeah. look over to Joey. He's got two E's and two F's, as well as C-G-N. Yeah, Joey uh, has the option to play fence here underneath the disc bars. That seems to be the standard play, but again opens a triple-triple, which I just don't think you want to do now as he is a big overdog in this game. So Joey's going to opt to keep things tight. I, this is a situation where I definitely would have spent more time. Joey seems to be rushing a little bit, but I guess he really likes this play of Elf, even though it keeps the dreadful CFG uh, anti-combination or anti-synergistic combination there. I think a player like Joey that likes to play fast is willing to slow down when the game is close. 
when he's behind. But when he's ahead, I think he's just feeling confident and he's just going to play the instinctual play that he sees pretty quickly. So Chris has two bingos here, uh, one on top and one near the bottom of the board. Uh, Osteoma is the seven that plays on top. I'll let the chat think about the bingo that plays near the bottom of the board. Uh, it's a toughie. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, and I'll continue to look. And as the chat will, um, looks like Morris found it. To find a bingo there, you have to make the blank a very difficult letter, which is what makes it so hard to find. Um, we'll see if Chris is able to find either of his two bingos. If not, he could play something like Mojo and fork the board, also opening a triple-triple lane. So oh, that might no have bingo. a lot of um, merit regardless of the two bingos available. Oh, man, Mojo is a really fun play. Uh, for, the nice thing for Chris is all of these plays, Osteoma, Metazoan, and Mojo, throw this board wide open in a very convenient and high scoring way. And just given the large deficit he has, you've got to open up that volatility. Now Metazoan just gets crushed underneath so frequently, unless Joey has a, unless Joey has all consonants or something. But even if Joey plays underneath, you get a bingo line back on top to try to crawl back in this game. And at this point you need a bingo bango or a bingo and another bingo soon to have a shot. Oh man, uh, all of these are fun. And he has M O O lined up. Uh, maybe he's looking at Mojo. Maybe it will let us try our Austin Powers impressions. Ooh, we'd be in for a treat there. Yeah, baby. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. I love it, Chris. I love it. Let's hit. Eliminator. I think that's honestly a better play than the two bingos, which will score about. 60 or 70, but get hit back with 30 or 40, whereas this might let him hit a triple-triple to really get back in this game. E, What's H, and... What's he drawing? And Ooh. A. Okay. Uh, he sees Hetera, though, so it looks like he might Hitera. finally get a bingo down if a lane stays open for that word. Meathead plays on top as well, so big, big bingo in both spots as the gambit pays off for Chris. And Joey couldn't have a better rack as Joey really unable to do anything about either of those spots. Well, Enix he can play Genic and go. Um, so Genic, G-E-N-I-C, uh, and go would it take out the one spot, but it wouldn't take out the spot that he really wants to take out, which is the triple triple spot. If he wanted to play up there, I guess he could play Emic, E-M-I-C, leaving F-E-G-N, which isn't the best leave, but he can withstand a bingo uh, that's not a triple-triple here. Uh, bingo starting with an H, for instance, would still score 100. Nine Hattai years. will yeah. score 100. Um, and Joey's lead is is only 100 points, now 125 or so after Emic. Um, but yeah, you can't get triple-tripled, especially not on stream, especially with that blank unseen. That's a tough decision. But if you're Chris, you got to be smiling at that play. Uh, Mojo was a clever gambit, and it's going to pay off very well. You can see there was some controversy in chat. Joey designated the blank before bingoing, and now Chris has done the same. I don't know how Chris normally designates his blanks, but I'm hoping he's usually a uh, post-play designator, and he did it to Joey just to get even. <laughs> I think this is one of the silliest debates we have in Scrabble. I do not care. <laughs> designated before, designated after, it is irrelevant to me, but maybe uh -huh. I am alone in that belief. I completely agree, but I love how angry it makes other people. And just for that reason, I designate them very early. Sometimes when I know I'm going to bingo, but I don't know what I'm going to do, I'll even grab the blank slip and just hold it next to me. And well, then circle my letter. With the Austin Powers theme, I'm going to start calling you Dr. Evil. <laughs> I love it. I embrace it. Let's go. Uh, Wes brings up, I think, one of the best points I've seen throughout this commentary is that silliest debates in Scrabble is a tough competition, and nothing could be more true than that. Uh, people will debate on the challenge rules, the dictionary, uh, if games should start at night or in the morning. There is a lot to debate about, but I think that's just because people are so passionate. Uh, people just love this game, and everyone has their own vision, and I get that. 
Uh, Chris has QI in the bottom right if it stays open. Joey, though, continues to take his time, especially now that the game has gotten a lot more even in score. I like the play of Riff. So I'm going to quickly throw back to the, the unseen pool for Joey here. There are only seven unseen vowels, A-A-A-I-O-O-U, out of 25 unseen tiles. So we might see some trouble. Now, Joey crucially draws two of them, which means Chris is likely not going to find relief from this five consonant leave. Um, but that's one thing to think about as well. And for that reason, I do think I like Riff playing the two consonants and nothing else. Okay, it looks like he drew one vowel, the O. That'll help him uh, a lot on his next turn. But first, Joey's going to have to find a way to get rid of a couple A's here. Um, or just one, maybe, with a play like Barge. But that would yeah, start this... giving Bingo floaters. I don't think he's going to want to really set up all those floaters that Chris might get to before he does. There's Grana next to Hetaira, G-R-A-N-A, -A, uh, which is a way to play off some of those A's, but it allows huge overlaps back for Chris if he has even one uh, one vowel and a, a relatively hard-hitting consonant. So this is definitely where you want to consider the unseen pool and look at specific threats that Chris could hit you back with. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, looking over at the pool right now, the only power tile left of the high scoring ones is the X. Uh, there's also a W, a Y, and two Vs, and the K. And then there are two S's left. So those are the sort of tiles you'd want to look at first. And as Matt pointed out, there are a dearth of vowels. So right now it is a very consonant heavy pool. Yeah, if you're, if you're Joey, <laughs> You've got to look at this bag and be like, that is wild. I'm not getting bingoed on. I need to score points. Um, and my opponent likely is just going to be crushing me with K, V, W, X, Y for the rest of this game. So points are the impetus here. Thinking about bingo is not such a concern. A play like Grana, Grana does not take an S, but you have to look at that pool with the K unseen, with the W and a Y unseen. There's a good chance he can stack you back with a no-brainer decision like a like Yank or something, and you've just lost yourself the game. I think he's looking at Arena next to Hataira, and I like that idea. It plays off five. Uh, it leaves at least one vowel, which is very important, uh, one of the A's, A-G, and it doesn't really give back any clear floaters for Chris to play through. Uh, Joey has the case E, so he doesn't need to be worried about bingos next to Hetaira, uh, but he does need to be worried about the five and six tile plays coming down from that blue square. Uh, Arena neutralizes that. It does play off the last E, but it, it holds a vowel, which is important for long-term flexibility. It scores very well, which is not easy to do with this rack. Um, and uh, yeah, it just kind of mucks up the board for Chris. So Chris would need some good stuff in the right spot. Arena is definitely an interesting decision. One other option would be Grana and DA instead, but that also gets overlapped frequently. Now, Joey going to drop the two A's that he just pulled instead, and I'm not sure I'm a fan of this. If you're Joey, the last thing you want to do is allow Chris to hit 30 points a turn with those big tiles as you get caught up with one pointers that don't score on this board, Joey fortunately going to draw an X and maybe he was expecting to draw some of the V's, the W's, the Y's, the K's, some of the, the high scoring tiles. But I don't think I'm a fan of that play. I don't like that play at all. I don't think he can score so little there. The score was way too close for such a play. Um, I had started off the turn by saying maybe barge, but he wouldn't want to put those floaters out. But once we had actually started to look at that tile pool, I think it was totally fine to put those flutters out. Maybe began instead of barge, so you don't put the E in space. You were just putting the A in space. And I think that would have been totally safe, scored a lot. The other idea where Arena was played, I saw in the chat, Morris noted it, uh, AREG, A-R-E-G. So that actually would have kept two vowels. And in such a vowel-lacking pool, that seems like a really smart idea. Yeah, no, uh, if you're going to play, you don't play barge. You don't float an E into that pool. That's one of the most dangerous things you could do. 
um, but began as a good idea to score more points. Noah Walton pointing out Aga through the G and Gs uh, is a much better way to play those tiles as well in terms of scoring points. But maybe Joey just very worried about a play like uh, Wonks or Wanks down from that spot, which could be a potential game loser for him. Not a fan of AA, though. Definitely not a fan of AA. Um, okay, so Chris also is passing up points here. He saw Blonde, and Blonde would have scored 27, and it would have been the sort of idea I was thinking trying to score and trying to go after a tile like the X, like the other S, the, the really key tiles left in this bag. Instead, he just plays shorter with Van. There are some boards where you really want to um, fish. This is not really one of those boards. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know how I feel about this play for Chris either. Again, just looking at the unseen pool, Lords is a good leave if you draw an E. There is one left. And otherwise, you're now in the same situation Joey found himself in, where you've got all these one-pointers in a situation where all you need to do is score points. Um, he is going to have Troy to the Y and QD, which is nice. It gets rid of one of those O's and scores pretty well. But both players seem not to be scoring points when I think that's the most important thing you can be doing right now. Are you able to see what his leftmost tile is? Chris's leftmost tile? Yeah, it's an L. D L O O R O T. Quackle once again recommending Sloyd, this time with the Y, S L O Y D, uh, through the wow. Y and Q D as well. But that that'll be on Chris's turn. That's a tough word to spot. Stringing an S is tough. And Joey, this turn is gonna make the began play, although I'm worried. With the ugly, ugly pool, Joey's going to find himself in some trouble if he picks up, you know, a K, a V, a W with that NRX leave. He's not going to have a lot of flexibility, and there's not a lot of places to put that X anymore. And there it yeah, is. And he this threw the clunkers. Like, Began made so much more sense last turn when he would have been holding two A's. Instead, he plays off the vowels in a vowelless pool. Well, not vowelless, a vowel short pool. And then he draws a lot of clunkers. That Y might be really important for him, so at least he can sort of form words. But um, both players are running into trouble here. Uh, it's a difficult pool, and they've had a bit of trouble navigating it. Uh, but Joey has pulled ahead to a 40-point lead, which is very big on a very difficult board like this. It's huge to note for the, the people viewing at home that uh, there are six in the bag now. So Joey knows he is not going to be able to exchange his way out of this rack either. Um, he's going to have to play waxy or very or waney and just kind of work his way through it. Uh, W-Y-N-N as well, maybe potentially, but um, V-R-X as a leave there. This is going to be dicey, and I don't think this needed to be a dicey game for Joey. I think AA lost a lot of win percentage for him, and he's really going to feel that over the next few turns. Yeah, I just posted the pool in the bag, and those are some ugly tiles. I I had a hard time typing them. They were just so ugly. Uh, Troy <laughs> comes down, so he didn't see Sloyd, but he does find Troy, and... That definitely is a nice idea. It'll hold LODS. There were six in the bag. There will now be three in the bag. And Joey's in a difficult position. Uh, no, this is this is tough. And again, this didn't need to be a hard game for Joey. He was definitely in the driver's seat. And uh, just AA uh, really, really going to come back to hurt him. I don't know if it'll cost him the game, as it's just going to be tough for Chris to score points with all those one-pointers. But... This didn't need to be a tight game. I agree with that. Um, and Joey will also be happy to know that there still is an A in the bag. Uh, so he has a chance to draw a battle after whatever play he makes here. If he can, it would be nice to make a play that hangs on to the Y uh, for the situations where he doesn't draw a vowel on this turn. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just not too much for Joey to, to do W Y N N, but V R or V R X as a leave, like you might eat that V or you might end up uh, getting caught with the X. Cause, uh, you can assume if you play Chris or three tiles, Chris is going out in two turns. So you're going to be stuck. Do I play the X or the V? I can't play both. 
Um, and you're probably going to have to drop the X, uh, you know, for very few points just to make sure it's not on your rack at the end of the game. Ooh. I think tough. the V has to come down this turn, especially if he doesn't draw a vowel going forward. It's just going to be too clunky to hang on to. And for that reason, I think you can't play something like win. You have to instead play navy or wavy. Um, Quackle much prefers navy, actually, as the top play over wavy. It unduplicates the N, and then we'll let him score with the W a bit easier going forward uh, later in the game. He could also just, as someone pointed out, just drop the X here and be a, go a bit slower into the end game. Uh, he will play Navy, so I'll, the three tile draw here will give him that key A because he has emptied the bag. Yeah, Joey up 34 right now, and he'll get just one more play, um, likely going to get caught with either the X or a W and a K on his rack. I think last turn needed to be wavy. Joey has to know he gets one more turn. He's emptying the bag. Chris is definitely going to find an out in two situation. You can't hold the additional points on your rack. Now, I don't think Chris is going to have enough in his out in two sequence to win this game. Oh, look, he sees loudness. It's not going to fit, but he has found it. So he's going to let Wax come down. He's playing old there. Um, it scores a bit more, but that's not the biggest consideration here. So a bit of a miss by Chris. Joey's going to be thrilled to see the Wax spot available. In Chris's situation, you have to try to induce mistakes or make things as difficult as possible. And Wax is such a no-brainer play. You know, Joey with four minutes could probably figure out better end games, but you can't let him just do that. You have to use that L, play AAL in some way, I think, to try to win this game. Uh, really tricky, fun end game situation. I I'm kind of surprised we didn't see Wax get blocked and at least try to make Joey's life more difficult. But I think each player kind of gave his opponent some opportunities at the end of that game. Um, but definitely an interesting game. Joey has absolutely broken his uh, no bingos on stream streak as he got two down this game. And uh, glad we had stuff to talk about, at least, if nothing else, this game.